we dedicate children is to connect children to the blessing. The number one reason why I'm here today and why these, these, this couple, this, this, these two people are going to dedicate the child or whether you and if you've never dedicated your child, you need to seriously think about it. The number one reason is to connect your child to the blessing of Abraham. The blessing that extends all the way back to Eden. Amen. Somebody read. So God, listen to this, listen, listen, listen. So God, not Pastor Hope, not your mama, not your daddy. So God created what? Mankind. God created humans. It was God. He created you. Everybody say, God created me. God. God created me. So God created man, and he said what? And he did what? Now, this is important because I need you women to understand you are not second-class citizens. Wait a minute, you said amen, but you don't get what I'm going to tell you. I need you to realize you are not supposed to train your daughters to grow up and expect somebody to take care of her. Amen. Y'all ain't getting it. I need you to understand you are not supposed to train your daughter that, hey, baby, you don't got to be smart. You ain't got to be aggressive. You don't have to be knowledgeable because you're going to get married and you go home and you just sit at home because that's your place. Well, that might be your place because you got children and it's better when, you know, at home with the children. But that don't mean you're supposed to be at home eating bonbons and cakes and candy and watching TV all day and, and cleaning up. Because I'm going to tell you what, you can only clean up a house so many days a week before that thing gets bored. Okay. And then you sit there and say, well, I'll clean it tomorrow. And then you start watching TV and you say, man, that's a good show. Oh, wow, 12 o'clock. And before you know it, there's a, oh, wow, that's a good show. And then your husband come home, and then you want to talk, and he's tired, and he's like, hey, nobody want to talk to me, man. Girl, I've been talked out. Why? Because the thing has been set up wrong. Yeah, we understand that, you know, somebody stay at home raising children if, if you're able to. But that don't mean you got to be at home. Boy. Read and God bless them. Somebody say equally. Equally. He blessed your son and he blessed your daughter equally. Read. No, hold. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He blessed them and then he said, This is key. He blessed them and then he said, is that what it says? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, what is it that I am blessed to do? Here it is. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Here it is. <laughs> to receive from God the power to achieve, exceed, and excel until it produces fruitful. You got to train your son and your daughter from birth that God in heaven created them to be exceedingly, wonderfully, I mean exceptionally, I mean a nice person, but you are supposed to achieve, succeed, and excel. You're not supposed to see yourself as second place, second class. You're not supposed to see yourself as the butt. You're not supposed to see yourself as the tail. You're not supposed to see yourself as the whole. You're supposed to see yourself in, in, in the terms that God made you. That is to be number one. Amen. 
And if you can't connect your child to that, you are connecting them to a curse. Because anything outside of that is the curse. And maybe somebody connected you to the curse. That's why God saved you. So you can disconnect from that thing. So God blessed him. And he said, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue the earth. And have no men. Pastor, what does all that mean? He said, be fruitful. Not have babies, be fruitful. Be fruitful is not having babies. That's not what that means. Be fruitful means be fruitful. Babies come in that package, but it's not limited to that. It don't mean have 10 babies. It don't mean have one baby. It just means be fruitful. Meaning, no, no lack. Uh, you up to that thing, bigger baby. Amen. Say it loud, a labra. And I never get it right, but you ought to say it loud. That, no lack is what you train your children. In this family, we do not believe that God desires us to have lack. You got to connect your child to that frame of thought. You got to connect your child to the frame of thought that here's the multiplying part. That we're supposed to get bigger. That family is good. It's good to come from family. It's good to come from a big family or a little family. It's good to have a lot of friends. It's good. We're not a people that only believes, and it's just me and mama and the, and the cat and the dog, nobody else. It's good to have people over the house. It's good to have friends. It's good to have lay, uh, uh, um, cousins and uncles and everybody in the family in a positive relationship. That's good. It's not normal for us just to be us two alone. Thanksgiving, it's just us in the house alone. Not just boring, wrongo, stupido. What, what, what do you say, Pastor? These are the things that you are connecting your child to. Some of us have been connected to these broken forms of belief. Some of us been connected to that. <clears throat> We've been connected to the thought that it's okay to, to be depressed. It's okay to feel lonely. It's normal. No, it's not normal. It's abnormal. It is not normal. It's abnormal. You're supposed to connect your family to something bigger. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Here's the question. Each year, you get better. Oh, you're supposed to get better. Why am I supposed to get better? Because I keep replenishing. Amen. I keep replenishing. Amen. Now, you got to understand that when this was written in the Bible, a farmer understands that each year, I have to go out and rework the ground. I got to go out, I got to put new fertilizer, new bug spray, new this, new that. Get the ground ready for what? Planting. Well, you got to train your child that we replenish what we use. We don't run out of what we use. Amen. Now, why is that important? Because it dismisses this frame of thought that I have to hoard things. You know, hoarders? Mm -hmm. That I'm going to run out of things so I eat it all up now. No, baby, don't eat everything today. We got more food coming. You don't have to drink up the whole gallon of milk. We got more milk. You don't have to eat the whole box of donuts in one setting. You just go have some more donuts. You don't have to steal, baby. We got money. See, when, when, when you train your child, when you connect your child to the biblical thought of replenishment, there is no lack thought in your family. There is no thinking of us doing without because we are being replenished. Why? Because the blessing is at work in us. Amen. I don't worry about giving. Why? Because I get. 
I don't worry about tithing. Why? Because it's replaced. I don't worry about this thing. Why? Because I have the power of God to replenish. And you as a parent, you're supposed to be connecting these children to these, these lines of thinking. Daddy, why can't I steal? There's no need to steal, son. Anything you want, we got it. I keep telling you, you're supposed to train your child how to, how to ask and how to receive. I tell you that. Each year, you, they don't have the, the Spiegel's catalogs anymore, but go online, let the baby go and pick out their gifts. Let the baby pick out the Christmas gifts and then give them a seed and say, here, go, go sow a seed for what you want. You are training them biblical process. Go sow a seed for your Christmas gift. Don't train them Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is not coming. Don't connect your child to the lie. I know that some of you, and I didn't mess with nobody this year. I know some of y'all came out with, uh, th uh, not Thanksgiving, Halloween stuff, put the, put the big pumpkin on your baby's head. Don't connect your child to lies. That's right, that's right. Tell it. You don't get it. It's fun. You're trying to take away all the fun. Well, I got a fresh one for you. I got another line of thinking for you. It's called truth. Amen. Hey, connect your child to the truth. It's much better. Amen. <laughs> uh, Santa Claus is coming, baby. No, he's not. Daddy and Mama's coming. Grandma's coming. Auntie Jane is coming. And now watch this. 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 Everybody watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Don't watch her. Watch this. Watch this. If you train your child how to replenish their life, wow. Think of what you really get. There is no need for fairy tales. They are living a life of a fairy tale. Yeah, I don't have to train my child about a fairy tale when all their friends say they live in a fairy tale. My children used to say to us, y'all rich. <laughs> they ain't no no better. <laughs> but you ain't supposed to train your child. No, we can't have. No, we can't give. No, no. No, you're training your child to steal. You're training your child that they have to make the way on their own. You're training themselves, your children, I got to get away from my family. I got to disconnect from my family. They are horrible people. But when, you, when you take this line of thinking, when you connect your children, to this. Now, I don't care whether you were divorced. I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you had a baby by, by a man who raped you. The child has no dealings with that. Amen. Don't connect your child to that. Connect your child to this. Mama, how did I get, how did I get here? You got here because God wants you here. Amen. Come on, baby. You got here because Uncle Charlie... He said, oh, Uncle Charlie hurt me, oh. And you passing all this hurt on his back. That's right. Don't do that to him. Please, for God's sake, don't do that to that child. Don't do that to that. Don't, don't sow confusion in the life of those children, that child. You are here because you're loved. Amen. Was I wanted? Yes, we want you. I mean, what I wanted. Yes, we want you. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mom. Did Daddy want me? Yes, we want you. You ain't answering that question right. Did, did Daddy want me? Girl, we want you. <laughs> Granddaddy wants you. Uncle Charlie, Pastor, somebody wants you. Just concentrate on that. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. <laughs> Is it subdue or take dominion? Subdue. subdue. You got to train them to subdue. What do you mean subdue? Bring things under order. You got to train your child how to live an orderly life. 
Come on, everybody say amen. amen. You got to train your children how to subdue this world that they live in. What do you mean to do? Bring order to their world. Dismiss this chaotic philosophy of living. That everything is just ooh, erratic and spastic. Uh-uh, no, no, not in this house. Stop all this loud talking. Stop all this tearing up the house. Stop all this just going through the house, creating havoc. Train your, ch your child. Sit down. Train your child. Don't touch things on the table. What are you doing? You're connecting them to the blessing. They don't sound like them. Yes, you are. You're training them to subdue. Then when they get older, they go on a job. God can place them in chaotic situations, and they take dominion. God can trust them to go into bad situations, and they take over. God can trust them to go into a business that's failing, and they take over. And now the business spins correctly. Why? Because they learn how to. Bring order. You got your child bedroom out of order? <coughs> your bedroom out of order? You got drawers on the TV? Drawers on the antenna. I don't know if they got antennas anymore. Drawers on the antenna. Leave them they dry it out. Everybody get your dryers. Here's a thought. Ask God to give you a dryer. Well, guess who? I can't have a dryer. They got dryers for apartments. They got the little 120 club. Ho, ho, ho. Listen, I'm not messing with people that can't do no better. That's not what this conversation is. This conversation is taking you, taking your loved one, taking your child to a place that the world is not. I'm not against laundromats or four laundromats. I'm talking about chaos. The house always appearing to be out of order. The life always appearing to be out of order. This, this feeling of chaos and erratic, that's got to go. Why? Because you got to drain your child how to subdue. Son, get to work on time. Daughter, get to work on time. Why? So you don't have to go running to work. Every, okay, I'm coming. Ah, I made it. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. That, it breeds it. That's not the blessing. That's not the blessing. That's not. That's not what it means to be blessed. It's not blessed. You driving down the road, putting makeup on, <laughs> because you late. Amen. That's not the blessing. Subdue so that. Subdue that. Get up early enough. When you, if, if you a two hour makeup person, I'm sorry. Get your high parts up, two hours early, and do all you got to do. Why, Pastor Hope? Because the devil's gonna take advantage of you, and he's gonna catch you one day. He's gonna catch you one day, and he's gonna utilize your weakness, your inability to bring domain, uh, to subdue your own life. He's gonna use it against you, and you're gonna hit somebody. And you possibly can kill somebody. Right. And then we go, oh, oh Jesus, why? And it ain't the devil, it was you. Right. See, people have this philosophy that to serve God is such a bad thing. Man, serving God is the best thing. Yeah. 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 It creates the best life. People ask me why they should visit the Life Center. I tell them, great services, great people, great church. Visit the Life Center. You'll be glad. See you this Sunday.